Welcome back to Teacher Man and Fish Channel. Today's video, venison cabbage stew. I'm really excited to bring this recipe to you. Soul filling, belly filling, warm comfort food. Let's go ahead and get started. If you've got the venison meat, the first thing you've got to do is clean it up. When you clean up the meat, just take anything out that does not seem appetizing to you. You can see that we dry aged some of this. This was a young doe. It's going to be as tender and tasty as can be. It's pretty obvious you can do this with venison or hamburger. Either way you're making the stew, let's suppose your freezer isn't full and you're looking at your canning options. Just go out and get some hamburger and you can make this exact same meal. Something else for you to consider, we add beef fat into ours. It does add something to the recipe, gives a little bit of a fat content to it, and we pick ours up in the grocery store for next to nothing. The good and bad that comes with doing this with venison is you don't get a very good brown if you don't add a little bit of fat. You can do the same thing with olive oil. I like doing it with beef fat. It just adds that little bit more to help with the browning. We found that this KitchenAid grinder is enough for a small run like this. If you're doing anything with any kind of size, I'd recommend a, a more commercial, more horsepower grinder. But with this, it's so easy to clean. It's so quick. Grab it, put it together, clean it up. It's not the same as the heavy duty ones. Ingredients list will be down below, so we're not going to focus too much on that. But I like to do all my prep work first. First up is mushrooms. Then stalks of celery onions, and if not the deer meat as the star of the show, cabbage. Since cabbage is the leading role or one of the main actors in this show, think about how you want that to be prepared. Whether or not you want a hearty, we like about one inch squares, shredded, or even into a smaller piece, say half inch or quarter inch diced. Next up is garlic. And check out this nifty tool that we have for removing the skins on the garlic. It's kind of a pain task. This makes it easy. We also have an easy way of dicing the garlic. There's an added benefit to using this kitchen tool. The nickel in the stainless steel, when you wash it off, it removes any of the garlic or onion odor that may be stuck to your fingers. It's like magic. There's a great deal of health benefits in this stew. Not only is it easy to preserve, but you're also low carb, cutting the carbohydrates. I'm always keeping one eye towards the carbohydrate side of things, and this doesn't happen. When we make a batch of this, you can see we make a giant pot of it, and we do several things. We make fresh meals for dinner that night, then we freeze some, then put some in Tupperware inside the fridge for other meals, and then on top of that, we save freezer space and can it. Stay till the end of the video because we talk about the canning process there in the end. The list of ingredients will be in the description down below and we don't do a whole lot of measurements. It's kind of just done by experience and taste. You can see I'm measuring in my hand there and there's a couple of unique ingredients we'll cover but I do grind in a mortar and pestle here the black pepper and the celery seeds, I think it intensifies and ends up being a better flavor, kind of a bit chunkier. I do want to apologize for the camera angle and a half angle shot there. I didn't quite get it lined up the way I wanted to. Dried from our summer garden, we do put a little bit of habanero into ours. We like a little bit of that kick that comes along with it. So what you see there is the basil leaf and all of the dry ingredients ready to go in. So here's the great debate. Is this a stew or a soup? If you start with meat, it's supposed to be a stew. And if you start with a liquid, it's supposed to be a soup. But we end up making this clear with no tomato paste in it. And it's a very light feeling soup. So I kind of lean towards calling this the soup. We'll be making this in two stages on the stove. And at that point, it is ready to eat. And then we'll be transitioning over into canning this. And we're making a huge batch. In order to save room in our freezer, we got five deer this year and our freezer is jam packed. That's hundreds of pounds of meat. So we'll process this through, can it and free up some freezer space. I don't particularly like the bell peppers in this. It's an overpowering flavor and it kind of drowns out the other more subtle tones that are contained in this recipe. 
I did want to give a shout out to Corner Homestead with Teresa. She does a great venison hamburger stew and canning video. You want to check that out too. She goes a little bit more detail about the canning process than I do. Another great channel to check out. Again, you're limited by your imagination when putting this together. We had some very late kale that we got in. It didn't quite explode, but we're gonna call this baby kale. We're gonna incorporate that into this too. I did wanna talk about the science or the chemistry of one cooking concept in this video, and that's called umami. That term was coined in 1963 in Japan. And what they discovered is that in specifically in simmering seaweed for a long period of time, a chemical reaction would occur where you added that simmered broth in with other meats and vegetables and it simply chemically up the flavor enhance the flavor you don't necessarily taste the umami in this recipe we gain umami from marmite that's a yeast extract it's a boiled down yeast extract sometimes it's called vegemite but you just put a tablespoon or two of that in any of your stews and it takes those flavors to the next level. It may not look too appetizing, but it's a game changer and it adds some carbs, but not many and it's worth it. Sometimes it can be difficult to find unique ingredients such as Marmite, that's more of a British thing than here in the United States. We'll put links down below where you can get access through Amazon to all of the tools, equipment, and ingredients that we use in this video. I've got another ingredient here I'd like to zero you in on, and that's better than bouillon beef bouillon. I don't get compensated by them, but better than bouillon beef bouillon is better than just your beef cubes. That's the stuff, link down below. While that soup is finishing up, we're going to go ahead and get set up to do canning. That's another skill that is compounded. And if you think of all the skills that are contained in this video, you've got butchering, you've got canning, you've got knife sharpening, you've got hunting, uh, skills that add up one on top of the other in order to ensure that all of this comes together. All of that is embodied in the spirit of this channel, gaining the knowledge and skills and putting them into effect in order to engage in life. Not just that, but are you passing it on, learning those new skills? There's a little bit of investment in the equipment and tools that you need, but most of what you're gaining access to is the knowledge, skills, and practice to implement it. From a canning standpoint, I have no idea why this doesn't show up in the shelves in the store. I don't know if it's the unique flavor. There's a difficulty in selling this commercially. It's, it's amazing stew, but you can't find it in any cans or in the store. Most of the time, what I've experienced, when you do it yourself, it's better than store-bought anyhow. So good. You have to try this. If you haven't had venison cabbage soup yet, it should be on one of your staple menus. Get busy making this. So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. This is my latest upload, and over here is a playlist you might just enjoy. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.